Hello, it's TJ, Michaela, and Erickson, and we're here to talk to you guys about body language in sports and in the business world. First, the definition of body language is the process of communicating non-verbally through conscious or unconscious gestures and movements from the Oxford Dictionary. Um, the body language of defeat, winner, camaraderie, shame, action, and alpha are actually six of the main different types of body language in sports, and they can also be um, in the business world as well. For example, when you win something, you want to put your arms in the hair in arms up in the air, maybe above your head, and if you're shameful of something, maybe you uh, will cover your eyes, you stop seeing what makes you feel so bad, and this, we actually do this subconsciously, and this can also happen in the business world when you lose a deal or something, or also when you like have a game or something like that. As athletes, Mick, Erickson, and myself found videos from St. Michael's showcasing athletes using poor body language. Here you can see women's hockey, men's hockey after a goal gets scored, almost all four jerseys in white throw their heads up in the air. And then in this one, um, after I took a penalty, I slammed my stick on the ice and made a few comments. Um, and then in the last one, you see uh, field hockey, a uh, goal gets scored, and one of the girls um, put her hands on her head. So um, in the world of sports and in the world of business, the body language of defeat is very prominent. Um, coaches will often preach that after you get scored on or you've had a bad shift, it's better to continue to maintain good body language so that um, that's better for the team. Uh, this also is something that happens in the business world, whether uh, you make a bad deal or something bad happens at work, you have to maintain your uh, communication skills and body language in order to um, communicate accurately. So next we have a video of bad body language in the workplace. Um, we're not gonna play the whole thing, but so the first one goes over bad eye contact. She's not really looking them in the eye. And in the second one, she's looking them in the eye and she looks very confident. Um, the next ones are about handshakes. So the first handshake they show, it's not very firm. There's no eye contact um, compared to the second handshake that they'll show. Um, it's very firm, she makes eye contact and she smiles. And that's all we're gonna show from that. Okay, so body language in the business world sets the foundation for people to communicate with others on a deeper level. Um, there's actually some pretty cool statistics about it. So 55% of what we're trying to say comes from our body language. Um, tone of voice accounts for about 38%, while the words that we can say make up about 7% of the communication experience. Um, research also shows that people indicates that people are 80% more likely to hold on to the information that they learn if it's shared with them using verbal and visual elements. One of the most critical characteristics that companies look for is nonverbal cues so that goes along with confidence, assertiveness, interest, intelligence, empathy. Um, when you're in the workplace, you have to figure out how to maintain these nonverbal cues because people will judge you off of them, especially someone who's higher than you, whether that be a coach, a boss, um, plays a large role in how you're perceived by those people. Um, and then for body movements going off of it, whether you're having a conversation, you're in a meeting, you're in an interview, in the middle of a game, as we showed earlier, you have to maintain eye contact, you have to maintain your, maintain your correct facial expressions, your upper body movement, your stance, all things, attributes that people catch on to during a conversation. Next, we have the physical appearance. So it's just how you dress, like what you wear, so like your makeup, making sure you kind of look appropriate for what job you're um, taking on. Even like in the sports world, making sure you have a jersey on or something like that, and your, your whole team looks prepared together, unified, wearing the same things. You want to just do that exact same thing kind of in the business world. You just want to look prepared, confident, more like we've been talking about this. It all enhances your professional life and how people view you. Next, we have like the voice qualities. So there's actually anger, disgust, fear, joy, sadness, surprise are all recognized throughout the world, which we all know. But then you also have volume, speech, tone, and accent, which are all like kind of go off of those. And that's um, necessary for business communication because it can be read differently. So if you have like a softer voice, it can be seen to be more ignored or interpret, uh, like more ignored or interrupted. And then you also have a loud voice that can be seen to be too pushy or insecure. And then I will have space and territory. Um... So looking for cues from others, such as backing away or moving a chair is a way to determine if they perform more or less space and trying to accommodate to different people in their comfort zone. 
the key to success, um, the key to successful body language for business communications is figuring out how you want your people to present themselves in their day-to-day -day conversations and establishing guidelines for nonverbal success within a business. And that's all we have. So thank you very much.